Hello everyone, welcome back to Dimension Quest. Over the years, I've booted the installer for Ubuntu and Linux Mint dozens of times to perform installs. I've seen the OEM install option, but never really bothered with it. This week, I'll perform an OEM install of Linux Mint 21 to see what this can do. I will be using a physical device here. I've got an old Intel Nook i3, uh, sixth generation if I remember correctly here, so some of the stuff may be slow for the performance. I will go ahead and fast forward at various parts of the video to ensure that you're not sitting here just watching me click along slowly or watching a progress bar for many, many minutes at a time. All right, so during the install, you can typically go ahead and choose a wireless network to get connected to. It's generally a pretty good idea so that you can ensure that you've gotten all the updates and custom packages that you want to get installed on here. So I'll go ahead and click on continue there. I do want to install the multimedia codex. Get that checked and we'll hit continue. All right, and I will go ahead and erase the disk. I don't care about anything that's on there and I will install now. Okay, I know that I'm gonna wipe everything out, so I'll confirm that. I'll select my time zone, New York. Now I don't need to bother with computer name because uh, once this gets to the actual install for the end user, they'll be able to provide that themselves. OEM is the OEM installer username. You cannot change that. I'm assigning a very simple password of Ubuntu, even though we're dealing with Linux Mint here, because I want something very simple to type when I am prompted for the super user password. All right, we'll go ahead and restart. All right, there's our Linux Mint. I'll just go ahead and close out of the little welcome screen here. Now let's go ahead and get connected to a wireless network so that we can apply our updates. All right, now that we're connected, I'll go ahead and open up a terminal window here so that I can do some apt installs. Let's get this resized a bit. All right, typically I like to install a base set of tools, which would be curl, wget, git. I do like having the Chromium browser available, htop, and of course my favorite terminal emulator, Terminator. And we've got errors there. Okay, we need to do a sudo apt update before we do our install. So let me go ahead and get that typed down here. Yeah, that's looking much better. All right, now that that installs done, we'll get rid of the terminal and we'll click down here on our little mint icon. And let's find Terminator. Let's get that added to our panel there at the bottom. There we go. And we'll go ahead and get that in a better position there. Let's also go in and find Chromium. We'll also add that to the panel. We'll move that over as well. Okay, good. All right, let's go ahead and open up Chromium. Oh, first time we're launching, so we need to provide a password for our key ring. I left it empty, so Passwords will not be encrypted on this OEM account. Now, I always want to have Visual Studio Code available. So let's go ahead and do a quick search on the install commands for that or the download file. All right, here we go. This uh, Linux Mint is a Debian-based distribution, so we'll go ahead and download the dev file. All right, let's go ahead and show that in folder. And we can be done with the browser there, so we'll get that closed. And open with the QW package installer, excellent. That's nice that Linux Mint has that as a default option there. Over on Ubuntu, it is not the case. So we need to give this a moment so that it can load up the package details. Now we can hit install. 
And we do need to provide our root password here. So I'll type in Ubuntu and hit Authenticate. Okay, it looks like the package is already installed there, so we're all done. I can go ahead and delete the file and empty the trash. Okay, let's go ahead and close our file browser there. And we can close the QW installer. Now let's go find our Visual Studio code and get that added to the panel. That should be under programming here. There we go. Right click and add to panel. Now we'll just go ahead and position it where we want it. There we go. Okay, we've got Visual Studio Code. Excellent. Okay, it looks like we have some updates that are available here. So let's go ahead and click OK for that initial notification. Let that get loaded up. And let's see here. Do I want to do local mirror? I won't bother with that for right now. I'll just apply the update for the in installer. Provide Ubuntu is my password there for the root account. There we go. It's downloading the package files to see what needs to be updated. And here we are. Okay, it looks like everything's checked there, but I'll select all just to be sure. And I will hit install updates. Okay, it looks like we've got some kernel headers and stuff like that. So I went ahead and told those to install and I've authenticated with my super user password again. And of course I am fast forwarding here, so we don't have to sit here too long. Okay, looks like we are set there, so we can go ahead and close the Update Manager. Now let's go ahead and restart, make sure all the updates are in place before we seal everything up as the OEM install. All right, connection established. So it reconnected us to the Wi-Fi network during this setup process, that's fine. We'll close out of the welcome. Looks like we have all of our icons in place here. Got our Terminator, that's good. Make that a little bit bigger here. And one last time, let's do a sudo apt update, and we'll also do a sudo apt upgrade dash y to make sure we're fully up to date before we prepare shipping to end user. Okay, this looks good. So I'll go ahead and exit out of Terminator. And I can go ahead and, yeah, yeah, we'll just prepare for shipping to end user. And one more time, we've got to authenticate with our root password Ubuntu. And it is done. So the next time this boots up, it will be the OEM install and it'll prompt our new end user for their specific details. Now, what I'm curious about is whether or not my customizations, these icons and apps are there when we boot into the OEM install. So let's check into that. Okay, just like we're receiving a brand new system with Linux Mint installed, we select our language, select our keyboard layout. And if we wanna to connect to a wireless network, we'd go ahead and select that right now, but I'm gonna skip that and just hit continue. New York is my time zone and that's the default. So I'll go ahead and put in my username here of Dimension Quest. And here I can set my computer name, so I'll just call it Nook i3, username Dimension Quest, and I'll keep a simple password here again. And hit continue. Yeah, I could encrypt my home folder if I wanted to, but since this is just for video purposes, I'm skipping past that. Now here we go. The profile is being built up for the Dimension Quest account, and all of the initial settings are being done as per the OEM settings. Okay, all those changes are being applied. And now we are 
at our login screen. So let's put in our password, hit enter, and no icons. Okay, but it is uh, saying that I'm, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi right now. So that's good. You don't want your OEM end users having your Wi-Fi information when they boot up their system for the first time. Well, I do have Terminator here. It just didn't have the icon loaded there. So it looks like the user profile does not get copied over from the OEM temporary user account into the Etsy scale. That's kind of disappointing. I would hope that doing an OEM install would let you fully customize that OEM desktop and just automatically take care of things for you. So that when your end users boot up for the first time and they get logged in after they've created their account, they have all the customizations that you've specified your default applications, your icons, your wallpaper, your favorite applications pinned to the panel, bookmarks, all of that kind of stuff there. So I do have a little bit of experience doing this and you can see here that um, this is the result of booting into an OEM install that I did where I took a few extra steps. Now during that last bit of the customization before preparing shipping for the end user, what you want to do is go ahead and set your wallpaper, set up all of your favorite icons in your panel. If you want to change that icon in the bottom left corner from the LM, that's the default for Linux Mint or whatever the default icon is, you can change that, get all of your tweaks done, adjust your theme, adjust your icons, all of the different customizations that you want. Once you have everything looking the way you want it to look when your end user logs in for the very first time, what you'll want to do is open up a terminal change into your root account. So sudo space dash enter, provide your password that you've specified during the install. And then what you'll want to do is copy the contents of slash home slash OEM into forward slash ETC forward slash scale. Make sure that you overwrite everything that's in there and then exit out of your terminal. Go ahead and prepare for the end user and shut everything down. Now you can test this in a virtual machine. That's what I actually did to do my confirmation. And sure enough, when I booted up that first time and it prompted me for my username and my region and all of that information, once I logged in that first time, I had that custom desktop and all of the icons specified that I wanted the OEM end user to see. Okay, I hope you learned something new this week. Thank you for watching and Make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and hit that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I have new videos coming out. I do try to release every two weeks on Wednesdays. Happy holidays, all.